we're going to hear for some people who share their stories as well. Let's get them up on stage right now, ladies and gentlemen. We've, we've got uh, Mal Coots from Talk to a Mate coming up. Thank you. Thunderous round of applause for these people as well. He's been a key contributor to rural and remote engagement program in Western Victoria for over five years, and he's part of the vital outreach service known as Talk to a Mate. We've got Stu Jennings, a potato grower. He's a third generation potato. A thunderous round of applause too from Thorpedale. And he's established a networking group called Young Potato People. Come on up and choose a seat. Might as well sit next to each other. And I think coming up right behind me is Linda Bertram, South Australian uh, CWA. Uh, she joined the CWA more than 30 years ago. A glass of water. As well. All right, welcome, everybody. And uh, you would have, um, I I'm sure a lot of what uh, Jeff Kennett was saying would have resonated with you. And I might start with you, Linda, as an example. How often do you see people who are, um, have been in the community for a long time, and let's say, use the term, um, who have a lot more experience, how often do you find them existing rather than living? Uh, sadly, quite often. Uh, and this really concerns me great, a great deal because I don't think they have really grasped the meaning of self-preservation because I understand what Jeff was saying um, and I, the gift of life and what we all need to do, etc. And there is, we do need to think of self-preservation. As an individual, I think it is up to us to find ways and means of, of finding the right balance. It's all about finding the right balance in life and also to think of that word. And I, as, as a leader of a huge organisation, I continually find people are coming to me and saying, oh, I haven't got time to do this, I haven't got time to do that. Um, they perhaps skip meals, which is a no-no. And I also I always impress upon everyone that I meet and the people that I speak to, the groups, and even to our own staff, about the, the value of self-preservation. So it's, um, there's physical wellness as well as mental yes, wellness. Definitely. Now we've spoken about people with more experience. Um, let's, uh, let's talk to you, Stu, for a sec. You're representing the younger cohort amongst us. Right, yeah. I feel very <laughs> old in comparison. Well, I feel um, a bit like Beyonce with this microphone. What's, um, what's your thought there? <laughs> what's your thought there as far as um, what young people are about? They, uh, how, how often are they um, facing what we might call mental health issues as well? Um, Probably more often than people would realise. Um, I think Jeff hit a really good point there with the, the mobile phones and social media and yeah. Let's let's just like check that. that. For how many? And this is a sad point. For how many of you is your telephone the last thing you engage with at night, and not your partner? For how Whoa. many of you is your telephone the first thing you engage with in the morning? Oh, and not yeah. your partner. Definitely. Right? And one of the questions that's actually come from the audience is to what extent is addiction to Facebook, Twitter and similar social media platforms um, responsible in your point of, from your point of view for the depression and lack of self-worth self in young people today? I think it sort of stems a little bit from people thinking that they're busy because they're always on social media and stuff. I'll just, I'll just the point there where we're talking about how everyone's always busy we're always busy, always busy, always busy, and half the time they're doing this. Yeah. So you sort of just think if you put the phone down for 10 minutes, you probably wouldn't be so busy. And um, I think that perceived pressure of being busy and having to show everyone that you're busy just immediately starts building up yeah. pressure on yourself to be something that you're not. Stu, a lot of people say that... Um this generation is the most connected yet the most lonely. Yeah. Do you I agree with totally that? I totally agree with that. Because it seems like the more that people use social media, the less they communicate with other people. Yeah. Mal, you work a, a lot in rural areas, very remote areas. Yeah. And if we talk about loneliness being an issue, I would imagine that's pretty strong out there in some uh, cases. The, uh, the way that it's perceived with people that, like as Jeff said before about the men, the farmers, and I started off, it was about the farmers in the rural remote areas and the loneliness because they might not see anyone but their families in, in sometimes for a week. Mm. And they just keep working and, and the old adage before and, and probably I was guilty of it six or seven years ago with the males was uh, when things get tough you have a cup of cement and harden up. 
Yeah. And that's what I perceive. But in the work that I I doing going get, been doing going out there, it's the wives and the children that suffer as much as the they worry about the husband and and the the people working on walking on eggshells around the people with the actual problems are the ones that are hurting more than some people with the so, problems. So Mal, if a if a farmer um, breaks their finger or breaks their arm, it's like oh you'll get better. Well, and you no, see, and, and we are, we actually have no stigma in talking about that. Why is there a stigma? Do you think, as far as um, something as simple as I'm I'm lonely and a bit depressed at the moment? Well, that was how the talk to the mate came in because, like you said, the old if you've got an arm in a sling, how's your arm, Stu? How's it? Yeah, everyone says that. If you don't wear a sign on your head that says I'm depressed or I'm anxious or I'm worried about things. Yeah. But the people around you know it. But how do they actually ask you? to go and do something about it. That's why uh, the, the role I had was such a beautiful role to do because you've got people, and it's not a clinical role, it's just I go out and say, how are you going, Stu? How's the farm mm. going? And have a conversation. And sometimes the venting of the farmers or their wives can yep. just release that pressure. And I found it um, probably the most uh, rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. Um, you know, you just said that they don't wear a sign on their head, right? Um, and Jeff Kennett spoke about the fact that there were four suicides in one location in a very short period of time. So, uh, and I'll ask you all this, this question, what are the signs to look out for, not only in others, but also in yourself? Uh, I'll start with I've, you, Mel. Yeah, I've, because I've been going out and hearing stories of, you know, uh, a lady that I'd met um, wanted to come and see me to talk to a mate, and I didn't no, no, I just sat down with her and after 10 minutes she started crying. It's, uh, as it turned out, 40 years ago she'd been molested by a father and she'd held it in her husband and siblings didn't know anything about it, but she's been inside and has been eating it for 40 years. And thank God I was there at the same time and I'm, you know, just, I was that privileged for her to tell me to get it off her chest to take her then we yeah. took her, referred her on and she was fine. And, and that's probably one of the most um, rewarding times I've had. But p changes, we all change and we can get, like Jeff said, about up and down. But the changes, if you see, and I get on well with Stu, I've met Stu, so we get on well with Stu, I know him reasonably well. But you see a change for a week or two, that's not, you know, that's he might be going through a bad time with the potatoes or whatever. Or, but you see that change and he slowly stays down and you don't see the normal bub bubbling stew or mm -hmm. that's when you really got some problems. Stu, if you, um, if you missed the signs and uh, had somebody, um, you know, take their own life in your circle? Um, not directly in my own circle, but I have seen it in, in like others. other, yeah, close, close Look, areas and stuff The like reason that. I asked that, there was a question from the audience that said, um, this, this person has said, look, I had a friend who suicided recently. And I'd like to congratulate that person on the terminology. And I think there's a real trend towards the terminology of saying things like died by suicide or suicide rather than commit suicide. The term commit is often used with sin. Mm. Yeah, right? yes. And yep. so there's a, there's a real change in e even the language that's happening there. But their comment was, um, this, they had a friend, good friend who suicided. And although he had reached out to provide any support that he could, called Lifeline, his response was, it's all okay. I'm okay. So what's the plan B? How do you, how do you know that something's going on, but what can you do? Yeah, well, I think oh, in farming, especially the isolation of yourself, like even though farming's always seen as a very physical sort of activity and a lot of it's done in a tractor now. So a lot of the time you're isolated from other people and picking up on those signs of, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> picking up on those signs of change and stuff can be quite hard and yeah, and most people, well, a lot of people I've heard about who've had these mental issues say that they're fine mm. and act as if there's nothing wrong. And I've, look, I know a child, a person who my wife was working with his father they were sitting around the coffee, sitting around the coffee table, having a coffee, joking about the fact that they won't be able to sleep because they're having a coffee before bed. Um, halfway through the night, the son got up, snuck out, went to the local park and hung himself. And the father just had no idea. Yeah. They were sitting around joking about the fact they were drinking coffee. Yeah. And 
Yeah, so how if, how do you notice those things? So how that, do you see and it? And that's an issue. Do you, do you see the same as well, Linda? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, and I can relate to what both of our uh, speakers here have been saying because um, I have lived on the land most of my life and during drought time, especially on the land, it's most trying, yeah. most trying mm -hmm. for families, predominantly, I dare say, for... Uh, a male because he feels as though being head of the family. Yeah, he doesn't he, want to let anyone down. No, he's responsible and he doesn't want to let his uh, partner and his family down. Um, in my own area where I lived uh, at this time, quite a few years ago during a ver very bad drought time, we had four suicides in our local community. Three were men and one was a woman. Mm. Uh, and that absolutely rocked our local community. And when you stop and think and look back, because as neighbours, you say to yourself, well, what could I have done? What, ha what did I miss that I didn't see that I could have helped So from person? what you're saying, sometimes there's nothing you can do because you, don't, you can't see it. No, They're doing, they've become too good at hiding this. Um, and a, a lot of those who remain take a lot of, have a lot of guilt and blame yes. for that, right? Mm -hmm. um, ladies and gentlemen, and also I'm just looking at the moment, I, I didn't want to interrupt Mr. Kennett because he was on a roll and there was a lot of stuff that was useful in what he was speaking about. I also don't want to cut this short. Are you okay with me going a little bit longer into the morning tea break? Just checking, is that all right? I, um, because there's a lot to be said, I, I think, in this case. I hope our sponsors are, and trade show people are uh, equally as understanding. So if there's stigma, and it sounds like there is stigma in those who people who are feeling it at the moment. Mm -hmm. How do we actually uh, get rid of that stigma? You know, we're quite happy to talk about the fact that, you know, I've got a prostate problem, for goodness sake. The men were quite happily to talk yeah. about that. It's pretty mm -hmm. personal. Um, or um, I'm having my knee reconstructed. They're all happy to talk about that. But how do we alleviate the stigma so that somebody who is, uh, needs to reach out actually can? What are your thoughts? You'd well, see it a lot now, it, right? Uh, Education is, a, as we talk about, educating people, but I'm, I well, do that. Well, Jeff said that beforehand. Mm. Know the signs yourself before yeah, you get Yeah, and yeah. educate. Uh, you know, the old days when, uh, I suppose, they're doing f football fields and they cuddle each other, men and pat their backsides and all that. That's men with men yeah. doing manly things. Yes, <laughs> but no. go back in time, and my father <laughs> passed away recently. I know it's not a thing that men did. You actually didn't hug that much you know yeah. and you didn't and you weren't open but I, I do I'm a youth mental health first aid instructor as well and it's having those uh, educational programs to get people in to understand what is mental mm. health first aid I'm intrigued it's um, it's getting a group of people for a couple of days and you educate them on what to look for yep. how to approach like the, the, the approach if I think Stuart's having a bit of trouble the approach you take right listen non-judgmentally then go into the help part of it whether you get him to a, if he's really in need at the moment you can stay with him but finally get some answers for him to get him some people to go and see the doctor or mental health people but it's like first aid when you when you do you know someone sprains an ankle and you're with them and get them up to where the uh, education referrals go to yeah and it's educating the people is what we need to do. And I suppose maybe supporting them. I've got a, a lot of, it's come through as a, a multiple SMSs, so somebody's very passionate about this, where they talk about um, the pressure that can be placed on farms. So I'm going to try and summarise it. Um, pressure that can be placed by, you know, um, labour uh, sub, labor, um, rights groups or animal liberationists or social media attacks based upon somebody's point of view or transgender issue or whatever. Um, how can we support in those environments? And we're cop you know, a lot of people will cop it via the electronic media as well. Um, what sort of, uh, uh, and I'll go to you, Stuart, this is kind of, although we feel as though this is young people's domain, we're all on Facebook. Yeah, in right. fact, you know, the average age of a Facebook user is now uh, like 41. Right. It's no longer a young person's <laughs> platform. You know, they're way more into Snapchat. Yeah, well, I think, it's not to sound too harsh, but one of the biggest problems with social media is everyone's got a voice. Yep. And <laughs> you don't have to have any facts to prove that voice. And there's, there's no filtering. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And I think that that causes a lot of trouble because people don't necessarily feel the, um, I guess, censorship on themselves when they type something onto social media as they would face to face. So there are some seriously some horrible things that have written online all the time. And, um, 
I think, yeah, it's, it's something that's really hard to sort of work against. And I suppose that's part of the reason why I started Young Potato People was to try and get a positive environment for an online community. Yep. And um, try and make a connection and try so to keep it... Where, where people are supporting each other. Supporting in the, each in other. The environment. Now, yeah. I, I look back at the older style. This still went on in the past before social media. It was called gossip. Yes, that's right. <laughs> right, Linda? It was. And the, exactly. the, the talk behind somebody's still back. Still happens. And, um, one of the things that... I, certainly, I've got a, a psychological background as well. Well, one of the things that people forget about is this concept called stolen information and how powerful it can be. If I hear two people talking badly about me but not to me that will be far more cutting than somebody saying it directly to my face. Yes. Yes. Likewise, um, parents, if you happen to be chatting at night time about you're worried about you know, your son or daughter and they happen to be still awake and they hear you, that's a really damaging thing. The counter is the same too. If I'm having a chat with Linda about how awesome Stu is and he walks past and he hears me, that's a very uplifting mm. experience. Yes because he stole that information, that positive information, because he didn't want to hear, it wasn't there for him directly. Mm. So we can utilise all these techniques, as you say, overtly and so on. But when we talk about the older community, it's still there, isn't it? Yes, yes, it, yes, it is. And I think the thing is to talk to people, and particularly with people on the land, uh, farmers, um, we found after we had all of these suicides in our community, our men folk were much more aware and they would talk to one another. It seemed to create a whole, uh, out of the huge tragedies, it also did create a, something very positive yep. because men folk started to talk more. Yep. And if a man is concerned about his income, what's happening on his farm, if he can say, if someone, another farmer can come and if they might meet one another on the road, passing yep. as they do out in the country, and you can say, well, look, gosh, we're doing it a bit tough, aren't we? How about you? And get them talking and turn it around into something positive. Well, you know, this is what we need to do and that perhaps... Yeah. I think it's the, the conversation. We need to converse more in a positive manner and particularly be aware of the mental health of other people. It is just so important. I'm passionate about this. And so how are you has a number of different layers yes. as such, yeah. I have, I have said to a neighbour, they have come to visit uh, perhaps a, a couple, a, a man and a woman, yep. uh, and uh, I have said to them now, how are you? And they come in and they perhaps have a cup of tea or et cetera. And then if the, they go off and talk, the, the fellas and the women talk, but I think it's possi positive then to turn that visit, particularly if you know that they are having problems on the farms and we all do know we understand one yep. another's problems to make it a positive experience and if the, they can talk just I to think, check in. Yes, I think yeah. that's the most important that's thing of the whole lot. Look, it seems like the if I can take what you've said, the biggest thing here is to open it up. Yes. All right, just, just to check in and and uh, pardon my vernacular, but just to give a shit. Do you know what I mean? To care mm. and to, to, to make sure that's all right. Look, there's a couple of other comments. Uh, there's a person who said, look, as a farmer, I've had depression. I was living and organising for tomorrow, but hated today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. I'm on the road to recovery, but I had to learn to breathe again. And a lot of the time it is about taking that. And um, we're talking about how to make this um, discussion as open as possible. Look, we're quite happy to talk about Auntie Margaret, who's got dementia. <laughs> right, but not so happy to talk about Uncle Bruce who might be feeling a bit depressed because he doesn't have the same level of, um, I, I suppose, the ability to support his family or something like that. It's, it kills me in, in essence. It's, it's on, really troubling. On what uh, we're saying here before is when you speak to someone and you're saying before about what we do is listen. You know, you see, how are you going today, Stuart? Good, thanks. And he'll say, look, I'm having trouble. So, oh, that's no good, mate. You should hear what's going on with me. We just, mm. we don't have the time. You think you've got problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's exactly what happens. Well, yeah. But if you sit down and say, and listen to Stu, then be prepared to help him find the answers. Yeah, like, it does, by know? the way, it does sound like sometimes just telling another person helps you come up with an answer anyway. Yes. Since yeah. you vocalised it. Yep. Look, I, I know I'd like to be able to con continue this and I think we've only just touched the surface, uh, surface. But another comment's come from the room that says, can you please make sure you commend the efforts of people like Jeff, Jeff Mal, Linda and Stuart's people like them who've taken away the stigma of talking about this issue. 
they help in making a difference. Regards, John. Yeah. Thank you, John, for that. Thank you. And I'd Thank like you, to reiterate that as well. And in fact, I'm going to do some mental health first aid to Mal. Right? Because oh. you said men don't do this. Stand right. up, mate. Right. Stand up, mate. Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. Thank oh. you. Oh. All right. Beautiful. Good on you. All righty. Yeah, so much, so much more we can talk about. And you know what? Uh, Are You OK Day helps. Um, Beyond Blue, Lifeline, all of these um, things can, can help. But if you do feel as though somebody's having a problem, it's your attitude as well. I'd like to finish off with a, a dear friend of mine whose mother suffers from, suffers, well, has dementia. And unfortunately, um, she has very, very sh um, uh, low threshold of memory now. And so she was driving her mother back to the hospice and the mother turned around and said, you know what? I would love to have had children. Now you can imagine as the daughter, you could take that poorly, couldn't you? Mm. Yeah. But she turned it around to a positive and said, well, I've got good news for you, mum. You did have children and I'm your daughter. To which the mother replied, well, that's good, isn't it? I must have done a good job then. <laughs> that to me is the right yeah. positive mental health and may we carry that when somebody's having a down period and maybe we can help encourage them. Ladies and gentlemen, would you join me in thanking Mal, Stu and Linda? All right. Thank you. Stick around. Stick around. I've got, a, I've got a couple of housekeeping announcements to make. Look, honestly, just from, from a personal point of view, if you do have someone you know um, or you are going through a bit of a tough time, please call Beyond Blue Lifeline or the Kids Helpline. Um, there's always somebody to help if there's not somebody nearby who can do that for you. Um, I'd like to, I, I have to say this, I'd like to thank my um, product manager at Telstra for the service <laughs> that we've used. It's called Telstra Desktop Messaging. There we go, we've got that plug out. Um, and thank you for all those people who SMSed as well. Um, we're gonna, about to break for morning tea, but before you do, um, morning tea's been sponsored by E.E. E. Muir and Sons. It's a major distributor of fertilisers, crop protection products, seeds and other farm supplies to the Australian agriculture industry. Um, the company's ex, uh, uh, experience uh, company and experienced technical consultants are uh, able to advise growers and assist them to achieve optimum yields and maximum profits. And when there's maximum profits, there's lower levels of mental health issues. <laughs> uh, now, to give us a couple of words, I'd like to invite John Muir up on stage. Uh, sorry, James Muir up on stage. I'm assuming one of, you're one of the sons, James. Do you mind if we sit here comfortably and listen and nod with you? Not at all. Okay, you want to grab that mic? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give it up for James? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Toby. And uh, firstly, like, uh, not a problem in going over time. We, we take this uh, topic very seriously and a part of philanthropy within our business, we do definitely support uh, Beyond Blue. Um, in terms of what uh, causes me anxiety and, and a bit of stress is finding out I'm going to have to get up here following <laughs> Jeff Kennett and uh, present to a group of people with a personality like that. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, E.E. Muir & Sons is very proud to be a, a sponsor of, um, or sorry, a strategic partner of Ausveg. And I'd like to congratulate James Whiteside and the uh, Ausveg team and also um, Darren Keating and the PMA group for putting on such a fantastic uh, function. Um, for those that don't know us, we basically supply all agronomic support from um, soil wealth and uh, crop inputs um, nutrition, uh, agri-chem, seed, uh, all the way through to post-harvest um, and pack our supplies. So if you don't know us, please come by our stand. We're celebrating our 90th year in business today. I'm yes. fourth generation, which is yep. very exciting. Yeah, 90 years. And um, yeah, for, to, um, I guess uh, to, to give something back, we've got a drone that we're giving away. So come by the stand, put your uh, card in the bowl not keys, and, um, <laughs> and hopefully we can um, yeah, give the drone away at the end of the day. So thank you very much, and uh, yeah, look, it's a, it's a very serious topic, but at the same time, we should, uh, should not sit back and, and uh, not talk about yeah, it, yeah, and uh, really appreciate the time right. and opportunity. So thank you very much. Fantastic, thanks for your generosity there as well.